Hello everyone, I believe we should be live. Just please give me a one in the comments to let me know that my audio is coming through without any craziness. This does happen to me on a semi-regular basis. But yeah. <clears throat> right, let me see if I actually, according to YouTube, looks like I'm up and live. So is the audio okay? Let me know. All right guys, welcome. Thank you all for being here. Um, yeah, for those who know me, you know my name is Lloyd de Jong. For those who do not know me, my name is Lloyd de Jong. Uh, this particular broadcast was one I decided to just to do off the cuff. It's uh, <clears throat> great stuff. Thank you. There's Vot Veritatem. Andrew Martin says, I really didn't want to leave this world without knowing where I was going. And that was where I started my search looking into the South, trying to find that place of peace. Yeah, you know, Andrew... The, Islam, as you know, does claim explicitly to be Gnostic. Ishan Shah, welcome. Uh, we've got Andrew, Freethinker, uh, his servant, welcome. Uh, let's see, we've got Ken Johnston, um, who says, Brian is a very naughty boy. Yes. Uh, uh, horse, welcome. And uh, Timur, most blessed. Uh, yeah, check it out after work. So this is an introduction, something I promised to do some time ago. And I can see why he went into Islam now. Andrew says, yeah, it's Gnosticism. In fact, I've been doing a lot of background work on Gnosticism and also Hermeticism. And they are worse than I realized. They are far, far more insidious and far worse. Kush, welcome. Uh, <clears throat> okay, actually, okay, something I want to recommend to you guys. I'm not going to go very long today. This is a preview. I do want you to have a look at the new Discourses channel. Now, what is fascinating is James Lindsay used to annoy the living daylights out of me. James Lindsay, Sergeant Grinch, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. So James Lindsay used to be, let's say, a little hardcore atheist, and he was very critical of Christianity. However, if you watch him today, um, Ishan Shah, it's okay, try collaborating with apostate prophet and David Wood, please, need a large audience. Um, look, I may as well call up the president and say, hey, uh, president of Joe Biden, let, let's do a show together. Please promote my channel. Dude, it's it's about as likely as me calling up Joe Biden or the president of France or you, you pick the president. OK, I may as well call up the pope and ask for an interview and have him promote my channel. The fact that we're both on Earth, myself and apostate prophet, doesn't mean that we know each other. Right. And the apostate prophet quite bluntly refuses to engage with me, refuses to talk to me. There's a lot of stories there. And, and David Wood, David Wood hasn't said anything new in about six years. Okay. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure if I speak with David Wood, A, this is going to go over his head. And B, he's going to say, well, Lloyd, you know, Quran 9.5 says, and then Sahih Bukhari confirms. Um, look, I'm sorry, but that's kindergarten level Islam. I am two stages past that. Okay. Uh, I would love for David Wood to, to, to work with me, but don't think it's going to happen. And AP, that's a different story, Morgay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, AP, that's another story. Who knows why? But but let's just say there's a history there that that stories have been passed to me. And yeah, he, he seems to flat out deliberately refuse. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so I do my thing and they do their thing and uh, that's fine. Okay. Back to James Lindsay. James Lindsay has been putting out some stuff that is phenomenal. I must admit. Two years ago, the guy just just annoyed me and got up my my nose. Now, the guy, as you said, yeah, he understands the healthy cultural values of Christianity. Now, he gets it. He is starting to. Uh, you know what? I, I was listening to this guy recently, and I was thinking, a week ago, and I was thinking, give him 12 months, he'll be Christian. <laughs> Honestly, he is. he understands. He is starting to say things. He is starting to say things about... Gnosticism and Hermeticism and the, the ideas of Marx and the Enlightenment thinkers. He says, look, they all seem to come from one source. They all seem to be expressions of one source that is quite literally opposed to the Christian view, to the Western view, to, West, to Western values. And he starts to say that this really literally strikes me as the biblical definition of satanic, the opposer. And he is He's starting to use very Christian language, which is such a surprise. Now, look, I would strongly suggest 13 days ago, he released this one, The Dialectical Faith of Leftism. I would encourage you to, he is starting to tie Gnosticism and Hermeticism in. Uh, he's definitely, uh, I've gained a lot of knowledge from him, but I've been on the same path and, and he's, he's feeding my knowledge as well. So yes, 
you need to look up this one, sorry, uh, uh, the dialectical faith of leftism. Oh, good grief, it's constantly jumping now. Let me go here, this one. The dialectical faith of leftism. You need to listen to this one. It's an hour 43. Take your time, but you have to listen to this. He explains it. And also, what's interesting is he's starting to say that wokeism, the queer theory, all of this stuff, he says, this is not a philosophical battle. This is not a, just a political battle. He is now starting to phrase this explicitly as this is a theological battle. It is a theological war. He starts to understand the theological underpinnings here. Bear that in mind. Watch this. This is brilliant. This guy is starting to, he's waking up. I mean, he's genuinely, this guy is nailing it. So I did not like him before, but, but you know, people have told me and I, I listened and I, it's, this, this guy is on fire right now. Thank you, Sustain Christ. <clears throat> okay. Andrew Martin, correct. We do have modern civilization because of Christianity. We have science because of Christianity. We have the scientific method because of Christians. So apostate prophet is okay in his field. However, his arguments for atheism are so bad. Yeah, I agree. His arguments for atheism are terrible. It's so stupid it makes my head hurt. It's like a, <laughs> yes, makes so well. Yeah, I happen to agree with you fully. But is Christian Gnosticism, if it is in Christian, better? No, it is not. It is not even Christian. It is fully, we're going to look, when I go through the series, you're going to understand that atheism is derived ultimately from 6th century Greek paganism, which is from the foundation of Sophism and also Gnosticism. You'll find there's Gnosticism in atheism, but, but that's, anyway. <clears throat> Gnosticism is ultimately, and we're going to be demonstrating this, satanic. It is ultimately entirely satanic. It is not what you think it is. Welcome, Dragon. Thank you for being here. Okay, LGBTQ is a faith commitment, correct? Now let me see. I mean, at most, we become a Christian agnostic. Me, No, so do, do not confuse agnosticism with Gnosticism. They are very different. Okay, let me jump into where I'm going with this. I may be interrupted. I may need to switch off my camera for a minute and go unlock the door. So, okay, let me jump into this. So we're talking about nonsense, the fundamentals of nonsensicism, because I can tell you now it is nonsense. Hermeticism is equally laughable. Honestly, it is laughably funny when you look at actual verifiable history. It is just, just bogus, laughable nonsense, just like atheism for that matter. So Gnosticism was born when Neoplatonism met Egyptian mysticism. And I would agree. There's, there's certainly truth in that, the cult. That is most certainly true. And it really is nonsense. Agreed. Let's continue. So the main source of this, or shall I say the inspiration for this, was a talk by Dr. David Falk, who runs the channel Ancient Egypt and the Bible. This was Gnosticism Explained, Part 1, an introduction and primer. It is actually very interesting. Now, I will say the content is very, to some degree, dry. It is very academic, very useful. However, I, I, uh, I, I think there's more to be said about this. Uh, he doesn't seem to really prefer controversial subjects. I tend to dive straight in. I did invite David Falk to come on my channel and speak. He did agree to and then ghosted me. So, Mario Sui, welcome. Thank you for being here. So, if you guys want to go and ask him politely, don't swamp the guy, but ask him politely. Arnold Nathaniel, welcome. Ask him, please, if he's willing to... Uh, to come on the channel. You know, the invitation is there. Okay, so David Falk, just so you know, he holds four degrees from the University of British Columbia, Trinity Evangelical Divinity School, and the University of Toronto, published in areas of the ancient Near East and new religious movements, and has worked for many of the leading technology companies in North America, including IBM, Sun Microsystems, and Oracle. Okay, this is one of his papers, Ancient Egypt, ancient Egypt and the Origins of Gnosticism, an Exploration into Egyptian Pre-Socratic Literary Traditions and Philosophy. <clears throat> so, he tells us here, scholarship suggests Gnosticism originated from either competing Christianities. Now that, unfortunately, that idea of competing Christianities, it's like saying that that two things which are opposites or three things which are utterly com com competing and contradictory are the same thing. No, these things are anti-Christian, they are antithetical. Or pre-Christian Jewish heresy. These views depend on Neoplatonism as a foundational philosophy to the genesis of Gnosticism. Yes. A lack of early Neoplatonic textual evidence is a problem that inhibits Jewish heresy view. Okay. So it is not a Jewish heresy, right? It is something that is separate from, in fact, it seems to compete with Judaism, right? Overwhelming evidence supports the identity of pre-Christian Gnostic sects. Great. 
Egyptian theologies provide a set of philosophical constructs and literary traditions necessary for the genesis and development of first century BC Gnostic sects. Its ideas can be traced to from the first dynasty through the literary traditions of Egypt until it developed into Gnostic and, notice, Hermetic thought. There's a lot of parallels between Gnosticism and Hermeticism in order to inductively provide a more plausible explanation for the development of Gnosticism. I agree. So, non synthesism It is confusing and complex, and deliberately confusing and complex. Right. <clears throat> yes, proto-Gnosticism, in fact, Gnosticism was rebuked by the apostles, by the apostles. That is true. Right. Gnosticism is a complex, it is widely misunderstood religious system. It is an anti-Christian, it is completely antithetical to Christian theology. Just like Islam claims we worship the same God, Gnosticism wants to make the same claim because they're both Gnostic. Islam is Gnostic. It makes the claim. It is more than a reaction to Christianity. It is anti-Christian. It is the product of Egyptian and Platonic thought with roots going back nearly 1200 years before Christ. It is intended, this series is intended to gently introduce the topic and add new insight. Thus, it should allow for better research, study, and understanding. So this is a easy overview. It must be noted that Islamic law claims Islam to be Gnostic. The scholars of Islam in the fiqh are claimed to be true Gnostics, the true Gnostics. It is an ancient enemy of the church, inspiring many heresies. It is an enemy today. Gnosticism or nonsensicism is widespread today, even in church thinking. Right, so Tildir, I'm going to do two slides just to summarize where we're going. The is socialism. So you've often heard lefties, Gnostics, Democrats, same thing. Say, it's all the same, you know, religion is all the same, all these things are all the same. Well, there's always a source behind a philosophy. So, <clears throat> in philosophy, as distinct from theology, Gnosticism means a dialectic of or strife between opposites or contraries. Obviously, we have Hegel, who influenced Marx, who spoke about dialectic, spoke about the dialectic, right? Where two, where let's say a primitive idea that's fading and a modern idea that's on the rise, these two meet, they clash. You have, the, you know, you have the thesis, you have the antithesis, then you get the synthesis, and then, of course, you, you escalate, you move up, history progresses, right? This is, now, Hegel was a uh, hermetic, right? Which, which means he was bat poop insane, right? Of course, Marx, few people realize Marx was, we could probably call Marx a Satanist. He was certainly Gnostic, but he's also a Satanist, right? Contradictory as that may be. So these opposites, these dialectics, these strifes, these contraries, they eventuate in the necessity for a secret knowledge or gnosis. In Gnosticism, these opposites that are in strife are part of the larger pantheistic whole. So these opposites like good and evil, Satan and Jesus, Satan and God, well, they'll say, well, you know, it's, it's all the same. Actually, you know, they, 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 you know, there's no good and there's no evil. It just depends where you stand in you know, because they're all part of one whole. I mean, if you watch recently, there was the Kathleen Kennedy had this little showcase on TV, this little about some new Star Wars episodes. And one of the guys who plays a character, I believe he plays the uh, Wookiee Jedi. He goes, uh, you know, in Star Wars, you know, there is no good and there is no evil. You know, there's no such thing as good and evil. It, it really just depends on where you stand and what your perspective is. This is Gnosticism. There is nothing evil. <clears throat> Dualism, yes. This means the universe is seen as a unity of opposites, a unity of opposites. I mean, for instance, there is no such thing as pedophilia. It's just it's just a misunderstood artist. You know, you just don't understand it. And that these opposites are not really opposed to each other, but are rather complementary parts of a larger whole, which means that they, they need to embrace opposites, and opposites are not contradictories. Now, of course, we follow, actually, we follow Aristotelian logic. Now, there are three elements of logic. Right, one, a equals a, p is p. Right, that for instance, a man is a man. Right, this is your, so your first rule of logic under Aristotelian logic, is that what something that is something is that thing. Right, then you have two. You have a is not equal to g. Right. So if something is a dog, it is not a cat. If something is a man, it is not a woman. This is the law of non-contradictory logic. So we follow the Logos. The Logos follows the law of non-contradictory logic. 
understand that atheists do not follow Logos. Gnosticism, Hermeticism, all of these crazy sects do not follow the Logos. They do not follow non-contradictory logic. They believe they can, they can find synthesis in contradictories. They don't even see contradictories. So, <clears throat> right, hence evil becomes good. Evil is good. It's just the opposite. You just got to just turn yourself upside down, stand in your head, and it's all fine. Born from the mind of Heraclitus. Yeah, Heraclitus, yeah. But isn't Christian Gnosticism, his servant, please do not call it Christian Gnosticism. It is anti-Christian. Those are propagandistic terms, and if you're going to promote propaganda made by your enemies who distinctly hate you, who are using this to undermine your position, try to ally themselves by create, claiming a false legitimacy, you know, we worship Jesus too. We love Jesus too, right? That's what Muslims say. No, their Jesus is entirely Gnostic, right? So is the overall picture of Gnosticism that nothing is wrong? Yes, there is nothing wrong, right? In fact, look, it's a, it's a more, longer, more complex story than this, okay? We're going to get into some of that. Evil is just a misunderstood artist. By promoting evil, Democrats bring balance to the force, if you want to think of it that way, right? Okay, <clears throat> basic differences of Christianity. Gnosticism and Christianity are different in their views of God, Jesus, salvation, and scripture. Gnosticism is a collection of ancient pseudo-biblical religions that taught that the material world is evil and that only a special knowledge of the divine can redeem the human spirit. Nicodemus, this is not pre-recorded. This is live. Okay, so Kush says Gnosticism is literally what Satan told Eve at the Garden of Eden to eat the fruit and gain knowledge, the Gnosis. The knowledge, yeah, actually, so hold on, yeah, what we need to start calling this now is, and this is a term, the knowledge. It's knowledge, right? Now, <clears throat> so only this secret knowledge with a G, this knowledge, can, can redeem. In fact, ignorance is evil. Not knowing is evil. And of course, your average Democrat, well, he knows, right? He's got the knowledge. You don't know. You won't accept it. Therefore, you are evil. Ignorance is evil. Right? Now, now the odd thing, Zachar, you are 100% correct. Buddhism and Hinduism are Gnostic. They are deeply Gnostic. Buddhism is like 100% Gnostic. In fact, Gnostics will tell you, like, like really advanced Gnostics, will tell you Buddhism is completely Gnostic. So, correct, Freethinker, that is true. The story of Jesus creating a bird from clay in the Quran is also in the Nagamani manuscripts, which is a Gnostic series of texts. And that is perfectly true. The demiurge becomes Yahweh. So, let's go on. Christianity is based... Okay, so Gnosticism regarded the God of Israel and the Father of Jesus as different beings, with the former, the God of Israel, being a lower and ignorant creator. Christianity is based on the teachings of Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God and the Supreme Being. Christianity affirmed that the God of Israel and the Father of Jesus are one and the same, and that the scriptures of the Old and New Testament are unchanging the word of God, right? Are the unchanging word of God. Christianity also preached the gospel to all people, while Gnosticism claimed to be the only true be believers and the chosen ones, right? <clears throat> so Gnostics believe that salvation comes through spiritual enlightenment. Note the word enlightenment, and you're going to have to think about the enlightenment era, the 1750s, the era of the enlightenment. Do note that I've showed before in my series on atheism that the enlightenment thinkers and the principles of the enlightenment, that villainous, welcome, good to see you, that the enlightenment that many atheists claim to follow were enlightenment thinkers, right? They many, many claim to do this. They claim to be enlightenment thinkers. Well, those ideas, those principles are identical to the temple of Satan. There's no difference between their principles. So it is satanic. And the attainment of knowledge. Well, Christians believe that salvation comes through faith in Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross. Right, moving on. There is a warning from St. Paul as one example. The book of John is entirely anti-Gnostic. Okay. M. Colby, I'd like to, love to watch along fully, but I have to get ready for work. Thank you for the good work. Yeah, well, I will be repeating this different another time. So this is just an intro, in, intro, just for me to get used to this text and introduce it. I promised it a while back. Is Gnosticism a means to Satanism or an end in itself? It is. Ultimately, it's satanic. I will discover that. Sounds okay. Let's see. Some Gnostic texts say that Jesus taught the world was a prison created by an evil God. For instance, the first apocalypse of James. Right? Guarded by an by evil archons who require a secret password. 
Now, Paul warned Timothy about Gnosticism when he said, O Timothy, guard what is committed to your trust. That is what is passed down by tradition, by church tradition. Right? Remember that within the Bible, it very bluntly says that so much was said and done that not all of it could be recorded in the Bible. But of course, then we've got um, Luther who comes along and says we've got to toss out tradition. Only what is in the Bible, of course, omitting tradition then. Avoiding the profane and idle babblings and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge or the gnosis. By professing the gnosis, some have strayed concerning the faith. Right. Now, this is, of course, from the Bibles, 1 Timothy 6.20 and 1 Timothy 6.21. Right. You can see oppositions of science. It is also called the oppositions of science, falsely so-called. Of course, we know with okay religion for the elites, when we speak of Islam, which claims to be Gnostic, they speak of the ulama, the scholars of the religious sciences. Right, The science has changed. Men cannot be women. Men cannot have babies. The science has changed. This is not Christian. Sorry, this is not Christian. This is not also scientific. This doesn't follow the scientific method. This quite bluntly, claiming that men can be women or men can have babies, violates the laws of non-contradictory log logic, violates the trivium. So this is the gnosis, where the gnosis, the ideology, trumps logic. It is, goes against the logos. The, they are the guardians and the transmitters and interpreters of religious knowledge. Men can have babies, right? In Islamic doctrine and law, embracing those who fulfill religious functions of the community that require expertise, see? As opposed to those of the adib, of profane knowledge. These are the alam. So this is an elite sect within Islam. The ulama, to know scholars of almost all disciplines, and it refers specifically to these scholars of the religious sciences, right? So <clears throat> that's Islam. So Gnosticism is religion for the elite. It is an elite religion designed to be intentionally complex. This separates their followers from those who don't understand. That is, this is Islam. This is Gnosticism. These are all the same. Islam has multiple levels with the knowledge elites at the top, the ulama, right? The ulama nati. If you cannot understand Gnostic teachings, it is because only those who are inducted into the mysteries can understand its secrets. Only the Democrats can understand that men can have babies and that you're a bigot for not believing them. Understand? This is Gnostic thinking. Gnosticism is often presented as the version Christianity, the version of Christianity that lost in the race of rival Christianities. Now, we will discuss that. I'll come back to that point. <clears throat> but Ehrman and others are big on that. It's complete trash, but we'll discuss that briefly. But simply, Gnosticism is a religious system that has as its central tenet salvation through secret knowledge. The woke stuff could be argued as a religious science. Villainous, that's 100% true. That is 100% correct. It is religious science. When you listen to James Lindsay, he starts to make that very clear. Okay? So-called many Christianities bull. Correct, his servant, that is true. Sustain Christ says, wow, so many similarities. Yes. Wow. Illuminati, of course. The Illuminati. Uh, you get hold on. You have seen me do this before. It's not like it's the first time I'm doing this. Um <clears throat> hold on. So now I need to go find this again because it keeps coming up. Um, oh great. So now I've got to find this book. Hopefully this loads. Ah, oh, great. Come on, please. Give me a second. Sorry about the this. this. I was not planning to. Okay, let me find a different way to bring up the source because Windows Search is one of the worst things you could use. I mean, Windows Search is horrible. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> so, this is the Mishkat al -Anwar. Now, you guys have seen this before. Now, the ulama consider themselves the enlightened ones and the illuminated ones. So, notice they are speaking here of Muhammad and they're speaking here in very Gnostic gobbledygooky terms. I mean, this is gobbledygook. Okay, and notice he calls the scholars of Islam, those, Ill those Illuminati, those ulama I mentioned, he calls them the perfect Illuminati. 
here, the Muslim scholars are called the perfect Illuminati, the perfectly illuminated ones. These Muslim scholars claim to be Illuminati. So, let me continue. So, a general tendency was to be observed among practitioners of the religious sciences to consider a certain knowledge only that inherited from the Prophet, albeit with nuances conditioned by theological orientation. And the science par excellence is that which derives from the Prophet. All the rest, real science in other words, is useless or does not deserve to be called science. Only this religious science, you know, men can be Men can be women. Men can have babies, right? These, this is atheists doing this. They do not follow the Logos. Atheism is, is ridiculously stupid. So numerous prophetic traditions on the study of science concern only religious knowledge. We can compare this to wokeism. <clears throat> the Ophites and Canaanites were also Gnostic sects. Look up the word Ophites. That's another interesting thing. Look up what Ophites means and what it's about. Is Darwinism connected to Gnosticism? I'm going to do a series on Darwinism. I've already collected the notes. I need to edit, get around to it one fine day. Um, I would say maybe yes, maybe no. I don't, I can't answer that. Not now. I don't know enough. But I will tell you it is connected to Marx loved that stuff. And basically it's, it's creating, it's creating a, a creation myth for atheists denying God. Except Darwin never discussed the creation of, Darwin discussed the origin of species, not the origin of life. Okay, now atheists will lie about that because they're dumb as rocks. But Darwin discussed the origin of species. He somehow just skipped over where life comes from. David Wood rejects this. Amazing. <clears throat> David Wood, yeah, I mean, he's, he's still stuck on Quran 9.5 and Quran 9.29 last I checked. Okay, so the ulama have long been seen as a permanent government behind these changing dynasties. The ulama are the deep state. Okay? So, <coughs> so, athe animals cannot recognize God, therefore, according to atheism, atheists are primitive. I, I like that. <coughs> so, Calvinism is like Islamic fate. You'd be surprised. Man, one day I'm going to talk about Calvinism and Lucifer, Martin Lucifer. And all these things, and yeah, that's a little, there's a little more Gnosticism in there than we'd like to think. The early church fathers. So nonsensicism appeared in the writings of the early church fathers, the apostles of the apostles. <clears throat> it is the great rival of early Christian faith, appearing roughly contemporaneous with it. Many believe it died out in the 4th century. Critics of historical Christianity use Gnosticism as a basis for comparison. Much of the historic status of Christianity hinges on the nature of the conflict between early Christians and Gnostics. The texts of the Mandaeans have been used by scholars like Rudolf Bultmann to support the thesis of a pre-Christian Gnosticism which influenced the New Testament. In other words, Christianity drew from, copied Gnosticism, which is fascinating. This is the guy over here. <clears throat> he lived from 1884 to 1976. He was a German Lutheran, <coughs> Luther, Luther, he followed Luther, theologian and professor of the New Testament at the University of Marburg. He was one of the major figures of early 20th century biblical studies. I should mention that this idea was one that was really prominent with a scholar called, called Werner Bauer, the Bauer thesis. Oh, they lost their 15 year old son in disease. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. <clears throat> okay, so, so yeah. David Wood's a different role. He's busy enough. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. I mean, but look, I think David Wood needs to catch up with. He's a little bit behind, I think, at this point. And Damian, welcome. On the other hand, let's look at a guy called E.M. Yamauchi. This is my Daik incantation text. Now, this is much more modern information, right? This is later research, newer research, more thorough, more detailed compared to some of the older research, which sparked off the whole anti-Christian movement. So Yamauchi, whose dissertation examined the earliest Mandaic text, concludes that the Mandaeans could not have originated before the 2nd century AD. So Rudolf Bultmann has some explaining to do. <clears throat> Why am I coughing, man? Because I've got the worst case of hay fever I've had in 3-4 years, I don't know. So he notes that their emphasis upon marriage and procreation distinguishes them from the ethics of other Gnostic groups. Now, we will be talking about this whole idea of marriage and procreation. We will be discussing some of those as we go. He suggests that the Gnostic theology was transmitted by a migration from Transjordan to Mesopotamia, where this was fused with an indigenous cult from the observation of many ancient Mesopotamian elements, 
which have been retained in their magic and rites, just like Islam has magic and rites. It is probably their strong ritual tradition which has enabled the Mandane community to become the only Gnostics to survive to this day, and that is not true. Muslims are bluntly, outright Gnostics. They make the claim. William Wonderly and Frank Cedric, welcome. Says, you're doing a great job, Lord. We're all blessed that you share so much knowledge. Thank you very much. Islam is so dark to the point that it says all science are false except what Momo said. Yes, I just showed that, but that's that made its way into the Sharia. Muslims will deny Ibn Taymiyyah, but his words are now part of the Ijma, the consensus. So, <clears throat> Tony, I agree with you. I fully, fully agree with you. Right. Okay, now, Elaine Pagels has her fee-fees hurt. She wrote here the Gnostic Gospels, long buried and suppressed. The Gnostic Gospels contain the secret writings attributed to the followers of Jesus. Attributed to. It's like saying, it's like, it's like me saying, the, the formula E equals MC squared is attributed to uh, to Martin Luther. You know, um, the, the the book, uh, you know, the, the Bible is attributed to, 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 I don't know, to villainous SSB. It's attributed, I'm attributing it. Look, I mean, anyone can make up anything and claim, you know, besides. Any, anyway, so yeah, it's just whatever. This is just, honestly, the language is just propaganda. Beyond Belief, The Secret Gospels of Thomas Elaine Pagels. Okay. She suggested that there were many Christianities running around the landscape and modern Christianity won the war by suppressing Gnosticism. What she means is that the Catholic Church violently beat everybody else with a big stick. Although the Gospels of the New Testament, like those discovered at Nag Hammadi... Okay, here's a question. Nag Hammadi, who of you have taken the time... Now, now I spoke with Thaddeus about this. He disagreed with me completely. He just rejected the idea. But someone raised this and I thought it was interesting. Okay, I actually thought it was kind of interesting. Hamadi, Nag Hamadi. I went to look up what does Nag Hamadi mean. It's like me saying, what does the word katana mean? And then someone smart says, oh, it means Japanese sword. No, katana does not mean Japanese sword. Yes, it is a Japanese sword, but what does it mean? Okay. So Nag Hamadi, when you look it up, you try to find out what does Nag Hamadi mean? You cannot find what it means. They'll say, well, you know, it's a place in Egypt where, you know, they found these scrolls that, that contain the, 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 the Gnostic texts you know that that's that's it's a place where the where samurai cop <laughs> michael you're on the ball dude <laughs> well done welcome to do that nag hamadi okay so here okay when we say will who do we mean william when we say bill we mean william because bill and will are diminutives of william so hamadi means belonging to, of, Hamad. Of Hamad. What is Hamad? Well, Hamad is the diminutive of Mohammed. Hamad is the diminutive. So Nag Hamadi, Nag comes, Nag, you can, you'll find it in Arabic, it's Naj. Right? <clears throat> so Naj Hamadi, this would mean, uh, Naj means, I can't remember the name now, unfortunately, but it means righteous or something like that. It doesn't mean righteous, but it's something like, righteous or good or fantastic or awesome or something like that but basically it means effectively something like it's not the word righteous but it's something similar it's, it means righteous muhammad now they find these gnostic texts at a place called the righteous muhammad what do you guys think of that i mean is that just sheer, sheer coincidence i mean that these gnostic texts right what do you guys think of that uh, i'd love to see your your comments <laughs> Don't ask what the short form of Richard. Yes, we won't. Nagging Muhammad. So what do you guys think of this? You know, this idea, this Nag Hammadi. It's not righteous. The word will come to me what it means. Okay, moving on from this. Sounds sus to me, Andrew Martin says. Yeah, it sounds a little sus to me too. So she says, although the Gospels of the New Testament, like those discovered at Nag Hammadi, are attributed to Jesus' followers, no one knows who actually wrote any of them. Thank heaven she's truthful there. According to Pagels, the gospel writer's creation of Satan gave rise to the moral history of the West. This material is painful, she says, because you see Christians created Satan and then they then they called everything evil and then they othered everybody else. The Christian idea of Satan led to demonization and then to persecution of others because there is no evil. Villainous SSB, they found the original Quran. Exactly. Nag Hammadi, the original Quran. So Nag Hammadi is the cradle of heresies that guided Momo. Crazy. He's serving it. Well, look, I mean, I can't prove it, but but... Yeah, I mean, think about it. Why is it so hard to find out what it means? 
So RJ Nag is Egyptian dialectical for nudge. Dialectical form. Yes, I mean that's what I discovered. It was from Nudge. So <clears throat> so Muhammad means the praised one is his name for giving him his real name was Kutam. Yeah, well whatever it was. So notice basically there was no evil, you know, but Christians created evil and then they introduced evil into the world, like nasty people. It's like it's like it's like the Romans stooping little kitties in the bum was okay. Okay. For pagals, there's no difference between nonsensicism and Christianity. They are equal Christianities. How do you have things that are opposite, completely opposite? How do you say people who like abortion and people who dislike and are deeply against abortion are equal and the same? Do you understand? She has given up. She checked her brain in at the door and flushed it eventually because it wasn't being used. Do you understand? This violates the logos. It violates the basic laws of logic. It violates the laws of contra non-contradictory logic. So, now, unfortunately, this idea of equal Christianities, this is called the Bauer Thesis, and it's very popular with a guy called Blot Ehrman. You may have heard of this scholar called Blot Ehrman. So, the Bauer Thesis. So, Bauer, Werner Bauer, also lives from about 1870 to the 1930s, late 1930s, somewhere around there. Dies in the 60s, maybe. Whatever. But check him out, 1876 to 1939 or 1970, whatever it was. So he claimed that Gnosticism inspired and influenced Christianity. And, you know, his proof of the fact that Gnosticism influenced Christianity was second, third, and fourth century texts. So in other words, um, you know, basically it's saying that that Islam, the, the Quran, it's like, it's like Mr. Bauer coming along and saying the Quran inspired the Bible. You see, the Bible is based on the Quran because... You see, what happens is the, the Quran written in the 6th century inspired those authors in the 1st century. This is the absolute trash that this guy wants to claim. And then two, the guy wants to make the claim that these utterly contradictory ideas to Christianity, these antithetical ideas, are the same. They were all the same, they're all equal, and just one of them won out because the Catholic Church beat everybody else up. Okay, now, St. Irenaeus, the Bishop of Lyon, in his book Against Heresies, now that it has a further subtitle, Villainous says, yes, this multiple Christianity in the early church is such nonsense. That is true. It is complete crap. And one day I'll be talking about it. I've collected notes on that. I need to get around to that too. Horse says, and prior to the Hebrew God, it was quite all right to sacrifice children to pagan gods. Yes, it was. No evil there, just like the modern left are sacrificing children. Correct. To Baal. Right? Now, Against Heresies has a longer title, On the Refutation and Overthrow of the So-Called Gnowledge. Right? on the refutation, it's also some translated as, as on the discovery or on the detection and overthrow of so-called knowledge. Uh, correct you, sir, these people don't know jack or care about facts. But then again, Gnostics do not care about history. Ask a Gnostic to show you archaeological evidence for their claims about the New Testament. Ask them to show you archaeological evidence, proof that, that, there's, that their beliefs are grounded in any kind of historical reality. There is zero, zero, Right, So Irenaeus wrote that Christianity was passed down to him from the apostles who knew Jesus personally, while the Gnostics and Marcionites were distorting the faith. The Gnostics offered salvation through secret knowledge available only to a few. Irenaeus contended that the true doctrines of the Christian faith are the same taught by bishops in different areas. While many of the Gnostics viewed the material world as flawed and from which believers sought to escape to an eternal realm of spirit. Irenaeus saw creation as good and ultimately destined for glorification. And he says, I have spared no pains, not only to make these doctrines known to you, but to furnish the means of showing their falsity, so shall you, according to the grace given to you by the Lord, prove an earnest and efficient minister to others, that men may no longer be drawn away by the plausible system of these heretics, which I now proceed to describe. Yes, God bless St. Irenaeus. <clears throat> so, Irenaeus, Valentinian, and St. Paul. Gnostics borrowed the phraseology and some of the tenets of the chief religions of the day. There was a free mixing within these non-logos ideologies. They were freely borrowing and sharing ideas that even didn't make sense. Especially, they took from Christianity, just like Islam did. Matter was a deterioration of spirit, the whole universe a deprivation of the deity, with the ultimate end of all being to be the overcome of the grossness, the sickness of matter, and the return of the parent spirit, a return they inaugurated and facilitated by the appearance of a God-sent Savior, their version of the Gnostic Jesus. 
Big Sofa says, atheism be like, we are machines for making copies of DNA. Also, atheists, I do not want to have children. There's no meaning in life. Abortions until nine months. Heck, abortions until 24 months. Easily, these days. I mean, you know. Nudge, distinguished. Yes, Joel Thomas, that's it. Nudge is distinguished. Thank you very much. Yes, distinguished Muhammad. The distinguished righteous one. The distinguished. So, Nag Hamadi. Nudge Hamadi. The distinguished righteous one. Is that a coincidence? Is that a coincidence? I mean, seriously, the distinguished Muhammad, the distinguished righteous one, the distinguished praised one. To me, you know, it, little bells go off in my head, right? And go like, mm, something there. Am I simulcasting on Rumble too? No, I am not. I wouldn't know how to do that. I, mean, I probably could figure it out if it's possible. Um, I do. It, my, my content is uploaded to Rumble later. So... Yes, the Reliance of the Traveler also has Gnostic underpinnings. The war cry of the early church was that the Christian doctrines have been known all along in a manner others could trace no secret knowledge. Correct. Could I ask you guys a favor, please? Um, I am, I've am. i started to put uh, subtitles on as many videos as I can. I've been generating subtitles, uh, proper subtitles, you know, and then putting them in my videos. I did four or five today, three or four today. Um, something I'd like to do is to have chapter descriptions for YouTube that I can drop it into the description and break my, my video into YouTube chapters. So for the critical sections, you know, like five minutes in, this happens and this is said, would it be possible for, for those of you who have the time and opportunity to perhaps make these little, these chapter descriptions and just drop them in the comments for, for any videos that you have the time to do? Even if you don't do all of it, just a little bit of it, just say, look at this timestamp, you know, at this timestamp, there was this, then I can add it into the description. I'd really appreciate that if, if this is something you guys can do. Okay, moving forward. <clears throat> Muslims may hate, hate matter. That's why they cannot stand God being a human being. And actually, yes, that is true. It's actually in the Sharia that matter is evil. Nag Hamadi can also mean I am Hamadi. Hamadi is an old name still in use. But Hamadi, the I, means of Hamad, relating to Hamad, from Hamad, to do with Hamad. Hamad being Muhammad. It's a diminutive of Muhammad. Joel Thomas, thank you very much. Have I discussed, have I discussed Alistair Crowley and Thelema, Thelema before? Yes, I have. I have discussed it. Um, I have done stuff on Alistair Crowley. I have discussed it on my atheism stuff because that's actually linked to atheism. His servant, uh, if you can do a little bit of that, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, tequila prevented me from missing the stuff. <laughs> okay. Welcome, Sheikh Biyadi. Also, the idea that Jesus was not crucified origins from the docetics. Correct. I can volunteer for a month. Thank you. No, look, just take your time. Do a few, even if it's not all at once. I mean, a few lines at a time. That'll be really appreciated. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, horse. He says, go listen to the atheism series twice at least. So Crowley is something Jay Dye loves to discuss. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, now on this point. So Gnostic thought can be broken up into how the world was created, called protology, the nature of God and his Christ, Christology, and the nature and value of the human being, theological anthropology, and finally the end of creation, eschatology. St. Irenaeus battled a form of Gnosticism called Valentinianism. Valentinus, from about roughly AD 100 to 160, was likely from Egypt, educated in Alexandria, which was one of the cradles of heresy. St. Clement of Alexandria traces Valentinus's heresy through Theudas, allegedly a disciple of St. Paul the Apostle, of course, who, according to the Gnostics, had imparted special secret knowledge to Theudas as part of the Pauline inner circle. This is why they will name their Gnostic books the Gospel of Thomas, right? the Gospel of Mary, the Gospel of Paul, the Gospel of Peter, the Gospel of Barnabas. They will name them after known characters from the New Testament because if they called it the Gospel of Frank, right, or the Gospel of Wilfred, people would go, who cares? Who the heck is Frank? Who's Wilfred? Who gives a toss, right? Understand, they had to try to associate their ideas, just like the Muslims say, we love Jesus too. It's simply just attempting to legitimize through false association. Okay, Valentinians, okay, Valentine's Gnostic Eons. Now, what I'll do is I'm going to do up to slide 15, then I'm going to jump forward so you guys can see some other stuff. <clears throat> Interesting discussions on Lloyd's recent, communi recent community post about atheism, yeah. Okay, so Valentine's Gnostic Eons and Ialdabaoth, the Ogdoad, the Decad, and the Duodecad make up the Pleroma, the fullness, okay? So that's fine. So you guys got that. I mean, so somehow we've been missing this in the New Testament. So when I went to church on Sunday... They somehow forgot to tell me about the Ogdoad, the Decad, and the Duodecad. Makes perfect sense, that stuff. Sophia, also called Akamoth, or Wisdom, consists of spirit, animal, and matter. 
Her child or emanation is the demiurge, an evil deity, creator of the material world, the god of everything outside the pleroma, the world of spirit. And this demiurge is the creator god Yahweh in Genesis. The demiurge is a false god who keeps the souls trapped in physical bodies, imprisoned in the material universe. Which is why it's okay, like under socialism, which is Gnostic, to murder everybody on an industrial scale because matter is not important and freeing the spirit is all that matters, right? The name is derived from the Aramaic expression Yalda Bahot, right? From Imperial Aramaic, you can see it here, meaning the descendant of chaos. Joel Thomas is looking forward to your stream of Sam Shaman on Thursday. No, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to that too. It's been crazy. I thought Sam and I would be, you know, Sam would be difficult. And it turns out that he and I just get along really well. I mean, you know, so yeah. Okay, so let me let me go here. I am going to jump ahead here for a little bit. Because what I want to show you guys is the following. Okay, so what I want to do is, because since this is not a full a full show, I just want to introduce this stuff because I'm I'm trying to look at it. I have found as reading through this, I am finding typos. I'm finding some grammatical errors. I'm finding because, yeah, now that I'm doing it for real. So I want to just introduce it. So what do you guys think of this so far? I'm going to go for a little while still show you some stuff that I'm doing, but do you find this to be helpful? I'm trying to do a lower level introduction before I dive into some really deep stuff later on in the future as I go. So Nathaniel says, the Demiurge is also called a fool, Saklas is something, so the creator of the universe was a fool according to the Gnostics. Interesting, I need to find out more. The tragedy is that many Christians think that Gnosticism is dead. No, it's in the church today. That's the real home. That's where the inroads are made correct. Remember, the, the, the smartest thing the devil ever did was to make you think he doesn't exist. Right. Notice that Sophia is also an actual Christian term, the Hagia Sophia, frustrating distortions from Gnosticism. Correct. They want to associate themselves falsely. I also says, love your work. Thank you. Yep. So, so do you guys, is it all making sense hanging together? Does this all, is <clears throat> helpful material on all Nathaniel says, thank you. No, thank you. I know. I appreciate the feedback, the support, the, the comments. It really makes a difference. Um, yeah. So, because look, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to do this for you as an audience, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that my thoughts are logical and sensible. I, I do try to bounce these with other people privately before I do this, So, but I need this. Um, so I'm going to try to do this at a lower level, shorter slides. Like this, this is a total of 36 slides, for instance, right, in this one. Ronan Ramirez, Ramirez says, fascinating stuff, release. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> his servant says we need this to be common knowledge. Yep. No, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to introduce this. I'm not going to finish it all, but commonalities. Okay, so one to eight commonalities, henotheism. So, so there are there are eight concepts that are common across many Gnostic groups. So by no means universal, there are eight commonly shared beliefs. Now look, once you really dig into Gnosticism, this stuff becomes satanic. Okay, it becomes anti-life. It becomes quite literally anti-life. But yeah, we'll get there piece by piece. The first is that the Gnostic idea of God is a hierarchical henotheism, and the creator God was called the Demiurge. Gnostics believe that there are many gods in the universe, but they only owe their allegiance to one God. That allegiance is never to the creator God, the Demiurge. So therefore, it cannot be Christian because they deny the Demiurge. The Demiurge is Satan or the father of Satan, right? So understand, there are many gods, and they can pick a god. So really, it's it's a form of polytheism. Do understand, Gnosticism, by this definition, would be a form of polytheism. I mean, there's there's a thing called Eon Radio, where this guy, this with this really deep voice, goes on about Gnostics just want freedom. Yeah, freedom to be completely vile, right? Freedom to be pedophiles, whatever they they want to do. Freedom from something, right? Okay, so Sister in Christ is very interesting, and although I know little about Gnosticism, I find I can follow. And they want you to know little about Gnosticism. Anarchy, correct. Anarchy, correct. But not the good form of anarchy where, where it's like freedom from government, right? Or, you know, it's this is this is freedom to do as you like. No moral boundaries, no moral strictures. Do you understand that? The way they mean words and the way we mean words are different. So I like the Haman Nagamari Codex. Very interesting. Thanks for your explanation for the majority. Thank you, Solution. Okay, that's great. Appreciate it. <clears throat> okay, interesting. The Human Rights Manifesto is a Gnostically charged idea that seeks to replace the laws of God. And we are seeing this. Yes, Lydia, welcome. And we're seeing this in the world today. 
nostalgic. <laughs> nostalgic. I like that. It's nostalgic for Muslims. Hey, Yeshua. Okay, so within the pantheon, all the Gnostic gods are fundamentally equal except the amount of light they contain. They do not owe allegiance to the god with the most light. Gnostics can pledge allegiance to eons that specialize in wisdom, truth, light, repentance, or personalities such as Messiah, Christ, Jesus, Yahweh, Adonai, Mickey Mouse, Tortoise, Hare, Blue Whale, you know, Hippopotamus, fill in the blank. This conflicts with Judeo-Christian monotheism. Understand? <clears throat> Think about it. How many people in your life haven't told you, I wish you love and light? Freaking Gnostics, right? Love and light. I've heard that plenty. So Des Volt Veritatum says, it is helpful, but does have overwhelming information bombs. Sometimes maybe some simple. This is the simple summary, buddy. This stuff is going to get very technical and very complex. This is the simple summary. Um, you know, sorry, but there's a, there's a limit to how simple I can make it. I mean, it's, it's tough, you know. Um, so I'm making these shorter, simpler um, slides lately to try to introduce it gently and then build on each slide to make it more and more complex. Could be reaching, but it seems there's a pattern. What kind of pattern are you seeing, Nicodemus? <clears throat> Have you covered Alexander Dugan? Uh, I've, a friend of mine is an expert on Dugan. I've got two friends who are experts. One is a, a Romanian... Um, uh, hold on. The one is... Uh, I actually know this dude now. <laughs> <clears throat> this guy's an expert on Dugan. Freedom Alternative. Okay, excellent. Back in 2015, I started this, this dude. I actually know him. I've actually, <laughs> I actually know him. <laughs> Interesting character. Uh, he knows Dugan very well. Go to him. He's done the definitive episode on Dugan. Yeah, I know him. I've met him a few times. He's very cool. Very cool guy. Um, I actually donated money to his channel this month. So I, I, uh, I like his work. You know, he does some good work. He's, uh, he's, he, so, yeah, I mean, I try to support other creators as well. Okay, so Gnostics believe there are many gods, right? They do not owe allegiance, and this conflicts. So you cannot call Gnosticism Christian. I mean, seriously, anyone who looks at, at, at Gnosticism realizes they're lying, just like Muslims lie about Islam being Christian, right? Yeah, his stuff is funny. The guy's actually very funny. You must watch his story on free and open source software. Man, that was great. As a, as a former Unix administrator myself, I was like, yes, I agree with him. So notice they say knowledge is in the way of Allah, jihad, right? This world and what is in it are accursed. See, this is the Islamic view. The religious scholar is greater in reward than the fighter in the way of Allah. I thought jihad was the greatest reward you can get, but no, it's not. Studying the secret knowledge in Islam, right? So number two, commonalities, two of eight commonalities. The physical world and the body are corrupt. The physical universe and all of creation are evil, the source of all corruption. The world and what is in it are accursed. This is the Islamic ijma. Right? This is the Islamic position. The apocalypse of Peter portrays Christ on the cross glad and laughing because he became a being released from the flesh. To kill you, jihad, remember to kill you is not a sin because they are freeing you from a prison of flesh. As a result, the Gnostic is constantly seeking release from the body. Well, I... <laughs> pretend to be a female right i can pretend to be a woman or a furry by identifying because i'm free from the constraints now briefly to give an idea gnostics are free from matter because spirit is all that is right so for instance you can identify as something now gnostics you have Gnostics that were ascetics they'll say well these Gnostics were ascetics you know they 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 stayed away from the world they were celibate that's because they go, I don't like God. I'm not going to participate in God's creation. So therefore, I'm going to turn my back on God, turn my back on the world. I am not going to have children. I am not going to celebrate the life and the world that God made. So this is a way of denying God. On the other hand, you have Gnostics who had orgies and went absolutely bat poop insane. They did, they did all sorts of bodily evil because the body was so cursed it didn't matter. Right? Because their soul would remain untouched. So now scholars, university scholars, I should call them scholars because, man, I mean, this level of, I should call them scholars because this level of negligence by academic scholars cannot be an accident. If I can find this coming from Africa like I did, if I can figure this out, then why can't these highly paid scholars with staff and research grants figure this out? It just, it's beyond me. 
So these Gnostics who had the orgies and went ape, they were also violating the creation because they, they were violating what they considered to be the laws of an evil god. They are, they are participating in this stuff because they're showing, because they're doing good, right? Because doing the opposite of what God commands is good because God is evil. Do you understand? So both of them, it's like, it's like in Islam, right? Following the four schools, they can be opposite directives, completely opposite, but both earn reward from Allah, even though you're doing completely, utterly contradictory things. And they say, well, it's two different things. It's not two different religions. It's two expressions of exactly the same idea. Both of them are to thumb your nose at God. Does that make sense, everyone? <clears throat> so, yeah, hedonism and asceticism, two extremes, but they are both two expressions of the same concept, the same idea, to deny and thumb your nose at God, right? To call God evil and to not participate or to do the opposite because that's supposedly good. That's, that's saying, well, God, screw your rules, screw your morals. Does that all make sense? Okay, very licentious. Sergeant Grinch, thank you. Is studying more important than jihad than on hierarchy scholars above jihadists? Yes, yes, Damian Kuzmich. Exactly, the scholars are above the jihadists. They're as far above the jihadists as the jihadist is above the lay Muslim. So now, understand, as a result, the Gnostic is constantly seeking release from the body, pretending to be a woman or a furry or by identifying. Some of them are also hermetics. Understand that, though. The Gnostic mind sees nothing redeeming or beneficial with the flesh. The flesh and the world are weak, evil, illusionary, right? I'm a woman now, right? I put on a wig, I'm a woman now, and to be forever disdained, right? This contrasts Orthodox Christianity, which says that when God created the world, it was very good. Again, these idiots cannot claim that Christianity and Gnosticism are the same. These are utterly contradictory ideas. Spain decriminalized bestiality. Oh my God. Oh, good grief. If that's true... <laughs> Is the scholars who convinced the jihadists to blow themselves up. That is also true, Des Volt Veritat, and that is actually very true. So, <laughs> okay, so, yeah. Notice the fundamentals. This is from Islam again. It's a polemic against Christianity, a very popular one. I'll go two, three more minutes. The fundamentals of the Nazarene religion are built on the vilification of God and joining partners to him. So the Christian religion is built on disliking God. Now, when they say Nazarene, I don't think they mean Orthodox Christians here. They could well be referring to Gnostics. You understand? So they speak of Christ entered the vagina of a woman who eats, drinks, urinates, evacuates her bowels and menstruates, then he got attached to the inside of her abdomen. He dwelled there for nine months, wobbling between excrement, urine, and menstrual blood because the spirit, right? Matter is bad. Babies are bad. Spirit is good. You understand what they're doing here? Number four, secret knowledge saves. So by learning the secret knowledge that only Gnostics have, can you unlock the mysteries of the universe? Knowledge is the key to transcend the world and return to the gods. Momo wobbled in urine too. But uh, yeah, you should read the Sarah. Let's have a look there. <clears throat> New Zealand, trans women attacked women for speaking about women's rights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. So only those who are inducted into the mysteries are said to be able to understand the secret knowledge. Orthodox Christianity is about who you know, which is Jesus. Not what, you know, the secret knowledge, right? The secret democratic knowledge. Non-synthesism is about what you know. And those who don't know the secret knowledge cannot ascend into the heavens when they die because ignorance is evil and you are ignorant. You're not a Gnostic. But are sucked into the whirlpool that lies below the earth and you are lost forever. So I'll stop here. Would one branch of Gnosticism look at another branch with disdain? Of course, they're competing schools of wizardry. Think about it. They're competing schools of wizardry. I mean, it's competing schools of excuse my French, but bullshit, right? The Leninists competed with the Stalinists. The Stalinists, you know, added their little nonsense on top of the Leninists. And, you know, they're all, they're all schools of Marxism at the end of the day, right? They're all schools of Marxism. But yes, they compete with each other. Yes, they fight with each other. Yes, they kill each other. Yes, they try to gain supremacy. They become worldly. They become evil, right? But they're all from the same root. Sheikh Biyadi, I'll watch a second time on Rumble with less censorship. Yeah, my lies are... Yeah, Andrew Martin brilliantly said, my lies are better than his lies. Thank you. That is actually really well stated. My lies are better than his lies. Exactly. Right. So let me see. Did I miss any comments? Let me just go through any last comments. <clears throat> right. So... Let me see. 144 verges, then 12. <laughs> That's all squared magic, yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, hold on. Let's see. Uh, the Dooza. 
So yeah, it's all yeah. He says he's rich. He identifies as rich. His bank manager just happens to be a bigot. Exactly. Uh, sounds similar to Descartes' philosophy. I think, therefore, I am. And yes, kind of like Joe. Once you start to go into a lot of the Enlightenment era, like from the 1700s onwards, you go into some of these philosophers. You start to look at what they believed and what they meant by these quotes. You start to realize these people, some of them were absolutely insane. Man, you know, another guy you got to look at. If, if assuming what I'm reading is true about Wycliffe, man, you start looking into the life of Wycliffe. Oh my golly, good grief. This guy, this guy was crazy. He was certifiably crazy, right? So yeah, I mean, honestly, when I start looking at the history and people tell us such wonderful propaganda about some of these guys, I mean, man, once you get into, like, as I said, my favorite character, the life of Luther, you know, first name Martin, start to look into his life, his history, the things he did, the things he said. Look at his Meccan period. You look at his Medinan period. Eh, it doesn't look so good anymore. This guy looks, he just comes across as a scum. Absolute scum. Okay, what am I missing? <clears throat> so, so guys, have I made a point? Have I been logical? Have I been, I know I jumped forward a bit here, but have I been logical? Has this information been credible? Has it tied together things? So, yeah, I just want to get you, just want to get your thoughts and get your feedback on this. Uh, the philosophers of the old seem to have swallowed this Gnostic stuff, and they did, his servant. If you go to the 1700s and look at these these, these philosophers, uh, Rene Descartes, I mean, look at Rousseau, you look at Hume, you look at these people, they were mystics. All of them were just full of nonsense. So, kind of like Joseph is crystal clear, his servant says, a thought experiment, will Craig accept this? Uh, will Craig, would Will Craig accept this? Probably is he reliable? I've watched some of his stuff. I mean, I, I'm assuming so. I just like to be quite blunt. I am South African. I look at Americans and I just find that, you know, at some point you got to say, look, that's trash. And and there seems to be this really difficult. I just find Westerners, and, and I mean, I count myself as one, but I just find Westerners very, find it hard to call a spade a spade. You know, I look at a transgender, it's a freaking cross dress. It's a man, it's a man with a dick. Okay, excuse my French, but it's that's a fact, right? I don't think it's unchristian to state that it's the truth. It's an absolute scientific fact. And then you you find these Republicans who are so wishy washy in their language. I mean, dude, that that's a penis. Call it what it is, please. <clears throat> okay. So, okay, yeah. So, so guys, did I miss? Anything? Have I missed any comments of importance? You can always flag me with, you know, at Lloyd de Jong. Just, uh, you know, to always flag my name so I can try and catch it. So, um, okay, so what did you get out of this? What did you learn from this so far? What is the takeaway? I'll go another minute or two. What did you take away from this? Yeah, in a thousand years, an archaeologist will say that's a woman. Exactly. Gabriel Gervais says that's what Satan wants. A flood of contradictory confusion to keep humans busy in nothingness and away from the truth of the true God and the Messiah, giving Islam more attention than God's would. Correct. So, yep, in prison, they would be segregated for not being what they were. Yeah, well. Anheuser Bush got screwed over. Yeah, I, it's unfortunate, but people get hurt. People are going to lose their jobs. But I hope they go broke. You know, it's like this is disgusting, right? They, they deserve to go broke. And another company will take up will take up the slack. You know, um, but they hurt, they hurt people. They hurt society. This is, this is, look, very briefly, queer theology, okay? Look. You need to start calling it what it is. It is transgender theology, right? It is democratic theology. It is queer theology. Queer theology derives from Marxism. Marx was insistent. His mantra was, all that exists must be destroyed. Queer theology is the queering, what we would call in proper English, the corruption and destruction of everything that exists, everything that is established, everything that is based on Christian and Western values must be destroyed, it must be corrupted, it must be queered, right? To be queered, it must be made crooked, no longer straight. It must be made corrupt, it must be destroyed, upended. Anything that is established, anything that has meaning and validity must be ruined. This is what they're doing. It's simply Marxism under a different name, okay? It's poop with sauce, okay? That's all it is. Marxism is literally anti-family. If you read these Ten Commandments, right? Marx's own little Ten Commandments. Yes, it is explicitly anti-family. 
So this isn't Anheuser-Busch's first run with Wokeism. I gave them around 10 years ago. Gave them up for some work nonsense. I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah, those poems by Marx are clearly satanic. And there's more than that, Nathaniel. There's actually more to Marx in his satanic writings than that. So, <clears throat> so yeah, Christian church must wake up. Yeah, the church. I mean, man, I'm so disappointed. You know, look, call a spade a spade. Okay. So Gnosticism seems to be the foundation to what we see today. Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, Freemasonry, and all this New Age and genderless society. Correct. Queer was a bad word, not Pledge of Allegiance. And Lloyd, yeah, yes. So guys, uh, let's see. Uh, the alphabet people are so oppressed. Yeah, of course. So, so guys, I will call it here. Thank you very much for your time. I hope this was helpful, useful, logical, factual, right? So I'm deriving this from, from lots of different sources, as always, but I'm trying to simplify, right? I'm sorry if I... If I, if I don't make it simple enough for three-year-olds to understand, I'm not making content for three-year-olds, right? So, yeah. So, guys, knowledge is power, okay? We need to understand. Now, now I would rather have a few people that are smart, grasp this, use it, than a bunch of people who are half-baked, you know, go off half-cocked. I'd rather that someone takes the time and focuses, right? So Jesus only needed 11 people. Think about it that way. He didn't ask for 5 million to be his apostles. He picked 11, right? So understand that a few people can make a difference. So guys, this is the preview. I will do this again. I will maybe do this with Thaddeus or someone else. So this is just to introduce it. Uh, love your feedback. And also, again, if any of you can spend the time to look at some of my videos and just put those YouTube chapters, make those little, you know, just, just put it in the comments. I'll drop them in so I can start to split some of the longer videos up into relevant sections so people can just go to a piece they like. Like on the KKK in my Gnostic series or whatever, you know, or the section on the, on Baron von Zabottendorf or whatever, you know, that'll be really cool if you guys can do that. Jesus had 12. And then, of course, uh, you remember one of them sold him for 30 pieces of silver. Kush, you know. Judas, 30 pieces of silver. So scratch one, 11 left, right? <clears throat> okay, guys. So yeah, we're, I'll call it here. So thank you all. My, my voice is going. Can we do that in your videos? Yes, please. Just add it to the comments. I will drop it into the description so that, you know, it, it starts to make those chapters. But guys, um, so this is going to be an introduction. I've got lots more detailed stuff, but uh, thank you for the feedback. I hope it's been useful. If Jan Irvin is still producing content, you know, I speak to Jan now and again. I actually do drop him messages. Um, but no, he's 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 uh, he changed careers or whatever and got into something else. So no, we, we've spoken about bringing him on and talking about things. But um, um, yeah, no, he hasn't made something in a long time. You know, you know what I'd love is if he would be open to, to giving me his channel with all these subscribers and I can maybe revive it and start doing content. That would well, give me access at least to his channel to stream on it. That would be great. Okay, guys. Oh, I should ask him about that. So thank you, guys. Have a great evening. Okay. <clears throat> I don't want four-hour versions like that. He's channel. Okay. So, guys, I'm out of here. Take care. Good night. God bless. Goodbye.